I didn't realize that the seed for this talk was planted more than 25 years ago. When, during a celebration in the middle of the mountains, in my hometown, in Sardinia, at the end of the lunch, a, uh, a friend arrived with an entire piece of casumarzo. Casumarzo is a Sardinian famous delicacy. It's a cheese that is infested by fly larvae, maggots jumping all around. I still have a clear image of that moment. Some of the guests at the party were extremely happy about the cheese, and they just came around and started to eat it, with some bread and some wine, and talking really loudly, as we generally do in this kind of occasion. Others just ran away. They were extremely disgusted by the idea of eating something that was alive. I've always been fascinated by discovering new flavors and uh, new tastes. And that day, I decided to stay and eat the cheese. And for me, it was really delicious. I think in that moment, we never thought that that cheese, in a few years, was going to become a part of a large food revolution. Honestly, we never realized that, for the rest of the world, we were a community of insect eaters. For us, that cheese was just a food, just cheese. When we received the invitation to coming here and giving a TEDx uh, speak, we weren't sure if uh, we were coming here to talk about uh, a revolutionary topic. Or maybe more talking about something that is mostly related in the human history of evolution in terms of gastronomy. We need to remember that insects have been part of human diets for thousands of years. Or maybe we were coming just for share a couple of ideas and building together a new way to rethink or maybe re-evolve our approach to sustainability. During the recent years, insects has been defined the food of the future, the unique source of protein, the food that will save the world. A new era of sustainable uh, food and, uh, and ethical farming apparently was starting. Fewer cows, pigs, chicken, a more meal designed with crickets and grasshoppers for everybody. For everybody, yeah? <laughs> Soon insects were defined as a silver bullet for solved problems like food, water, and like land insecurity. And even though these are pretty important uh, arguments, and in some cases potentially true, we need to remember that different scenarios require specific approaches. In a few words, Sustainability should include more argument than just a pure consumption of protein. Most of the products today in the market that are based on insect-based protein are really far from what a sustainable food should be. Unless, of course, we don't think that a lollipop with a cricket inside will be a problem solver for a problem like malnutrition, and uh, food insecurity. Today, the large-scale insect production mimics the same approach that generally are used in industrialized food production systems. Industrialization that it was supposed to be avoided under the dogmas of the insect revolution. This left us perplexed. Do you, or I, or anyone else in this room really need more protein in our diets? Here in Europe, the amount of protein that we consume is by far enough. In fact, the problem is not about the quantity, but rather the quality of the products and the farming systems which, under which meat is produced. According to the World Health Organization, Protein deficiency in Western Europe 
was eliminated after the Second World War. A modern European diet contains enough protein to maintain health in the majority of the population. So the issue that we're faced with is no longer that of protein deficiency, but rather moving towards or re-innovating more sustainable means of producing high-quality animal products. And there's also a need to make a fundamental shift away from the excessive consumption of these products. We need different perspectives. And looking beyond the narrow range of foods which constitute our modern diets is a place to start. We also need to start thinking about shifting our paradigms. For this reason, it's important to, to, to look to other places in the world where alternative foods, like insects, are already being consumed. Let's travel together for a moment to Thailand. Back to the same period of time when Roberto was trying the casumarsu in Sardinia. In the late 1990s in Thailand, small-scale insect farming systems were created as a part of a multifaceted strategy to address rural development and had very little to do with the direct provision of protein. When I first went to Thailand to carry out my research in 2014, my original goal was set on measuring the environmental impacts of cricket farming systems. But it quickly became apparent to me that the reason why farmers were so interested in these small-scale production systems was not because this was some kind of problem-solver, some kind of low-impact uh, source of protein. It was something else. If I had only decided to look at the technical dimension of these systems, I would have only had one side of the story. I would have completely missed the human dimension. So I decided to return again, but this time to understand what actually motivates farmers to farm crickets. As I traveled around northeastern Thailand, I spoke to many different farmers. And all their stories were very personal and unique. But they did share one thing in common. Cricket farming had changed lives. By starting up a small-scale cricket farm, men who were working in dangerous construction industries abroad were able to return to their vi villages and return to their families and have safe and comfortable employment. Families were able to send their children to university with the money that they had saved from the sales of their crickets. The elderly were able to have financial independence from their family and a hobby that they enjoyed doing and also really tasty food. Cricket farming in Thailand was not promoted to increase the consumption of protein. Neither was it to create some kind of industrialized farming system, nor to scale this up to be some kind of international phenomenon. The intention was to create a system which could help people diversify their, their rural incomes, coupled with the intention to further promote the consumption of insects in a context where this was already pre-existing and appreciated and celebrated. But that is the case of Thailand. You might be asking yourself, so how does this work in a context like Europe, where insects are not a part of our cultural heritage? Is promoting insects on the basis of protein alone enough for us to embrace these ingredients here in Europe? We don't think so. During my travels around the world, I became extremely fascinated by the fact that there are multiple reasons why people eat insects. But there is one reason that always emerges as fundamental. Insects are eaten because they taste good, for those who eat it, of course. Generally, insects are collected fresh from the wild as a seasonal delicacy. And that means also free access to food in places where insects are abundant. 
Insects are also cooked fresh as a normal ingredient, as a food. So what about us here in Europe? We are really far from that reality. As a chef, I think insects have to be the key to reflect, to make us reflect on our capacity to embrace food diversity and knowledge that come from different culture. Edible insects have to be an argument to make us reflect in a more profound and making, uh, giving us the possibility to um, re reflect in a more profound relationship with our territory. We can talk about edible insects, but we can switch this argument into uh, wild herbs, underutilized food, neglected species. Could be a really new way to approach the edible potential of the landscape where we live. So, more than being concerned, always, to, to try to find that food of the future, we must put more effort in create a better future for our food. Thank you.